There's plastic in your water. A new study shows plastic has not only been polluting the seas and oceans, but also most of the world's tap water. Scientists tested water samples from a dozen countries on five different continents and found that 83% contained microscopic plastic fibers. The U.S. had the highest contamination rate at 94%, while Europe fared better at 72%. The microscopic fragments are believed to be from clothes, plastic waste, tire dust, microbeads, and paint that have been flushed into water systems. Synthetic fibers shed from clothes and carpets have also been known to contaminate the air and eventually make it into waterways. Microplastics have been known to contain toxic chemicals, which could be released into the body when ingested. Many studies have explored the impact of microscopic plastic particles on marine life, but none so far focused directly on human health. With the current state of Earth's plastic pollution, though, somebody had better get on it. Put that plastic bag down! Instead of eating plankton, young fish are now eating plastic. About 8 million tons of plastic are leaked into the ocean annually, and its impact on the fragile underwater ecosystem has scientists worried. A new study has found that young fish are eating microplastic like junk food, and it's killing them. Microplastic particles result from the fragmentation of large plastic waste, or from tiny manufactured plastic like microbeads in cosmetic products. Measuring less than 5 millimeters, the particles flow through waterways and into the ocean, accumulating in shallow coastal areas. Larval perch that normally feed on plankton have been found to be actively choosing the microplastic as food. This has resulted in their stunted growth and sudden disregard for the smell of predators. The ability to respond to the smell of predators and flee is typically innate in young fish. When placed in tanks with their natural predator, perch that ate plastic were preyed upon four times faster than those that did not. All were dead within 48 hours. Scientists warn that the harmful effects of plastic is not limited to fish and may be felt throughout the food chain. The study is an important step in understanding the silent threat that plastic wastes poses on marine creatures. A U.S. ban on microbeads in body care products will take effect from July 2017, with pressure building for other countries to follow suit. Study could explain why seabirds eat ocean plastic. The corruption of a natural process that directs seabirds toward food is tricking the animals into eating plastic floating in the ocean. When krill eat algae, the plants emit a sulfurous compound called dimethyl sulfide, which has a strong smell. The smell gives a chemical signal to seabirds about where they can find their prey. Plastic floating in the ocean accumulates organic matter, including dimethyl sulfide. According to researchers, the plastic then emits an odor that entices seabirds to eat it. Five trillion pieces of plastic are reportedly littering the world's oceans, weighing a total of 250,000 tons. More than 200 species of marine life have been found to eat plastic, including birds, fish, turtles, and mammals. According to the projections of another recent study, 99% of all seabird species will have eaten plastic by 2050. New report says plastic will outweigh fish in the oceans by 2050. By 2050, plastic rubbish in the oceans will outweigh fish, according to a new report by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation released at the World Economic Forum in Davos this week. The United States, Europe, and Asia together account for 85% of plastics production, roughly split between the U.S. and Europe on one side and Asia on the other. Some 95% of plastic packaging produced each year is lost to the economy after a single use. Out of all the plastic produced every year, only 5% is recycled effectively. Around 40% is buried in landfills, and about 32% reaches the oceans. This corresponds to dumping the contents of one garbage truck into the ocean every minute. The production of plastic, which now stands at around 311 million tons a year, is expected to quadruple by 2050. This will bring the ratio of plastic to fish in the ocean, calculated according to weight, from 1 to 5 to more than 1 to 1. The report urges people to take action and to rethink the way we use and recycle plastic. It also suggests that manufacturers help reduce plastic waste by producing not only plastic that is reusable but also compostable plastics, a new generation of plastics that are biodegradable through composting. 500 sea lions dead, possibly after eating tons of plastic. 
Some 500 dead sea lions were discovered decomposing on a beach, 250 miles north of the Peruvian capital, Lima, possibly after ingesting massive amounts of plastic, polluting the waters. The North Pacific Gyre, one of the world's largest ocean gyres, is often referred to as the Pacific Trash Vortex due to the high concentrations of floating plastic debris. Due to rotational currents, trash is captured from across the Pacific Ocean, including the coastal waters off North America and Japan, and then is gradually moved towards the North Pacific Gyre Center, where it becomes trapped. The Pacific Trash Vortex is estimated to be around 2,200 kilometers long and 800 kilometers wide almost three times the size of Spain and Portugal combined. The vortex is made up of some hundred million tons of plastic, including large objects or disintegrated objects and particles. About half of them float atop the ocean surface, while the remaining, heavier half, can be found in the water columns below it or along the bottom of the ocean. The United Nations Environment Program estimates that worldwide, each square mile of ocean water contains 46,000 pieces of garbage. Plastic does not biodegrade, meaning it does not break down into natural elements. Rather, it photogrades, gradually splitting into small, tiny particles. When small enough, it can be ingested by aquatic organisms and therefore is able to enter the food chain. We are becoming planet plastic. A new study has revealed the amount of all the plastic that has ever been made in the entire world for the first time, and that number is shocking. It's estimated that 8.3 billion tons of plastic was produced between 1950 to 2015, and that amount is the equivalent to the weight of 25,000 Empire State Buildings. Only 30% of the plastic that has been created is still in use, and the rest has become waste. 79% of the waste is in landfills, 12% was incinerated, and only about 9% has been recycled. Much of the plastic waste dumped in the oceans has ended up in Arctic waters. Germany, South Korea, Slovenia, and Austria are leading in recycling efforts. Meanwhile, the United States only recycles about 35% of its waste. The only way to permanently dispose of plastic waste is to destroy it with heat, yet this method would also generate emissions that are hazardous to human health. Although the study estimates that the global recycling rate could reach 44% by 2050, that number would still be too low to offset the waste we produce. Oh, humans, what have we done? Despite having a population of no people, one of the most isolated and inaccessible islands on the planet is covered in our garbage. Henderson Island is a remote atoll located on the western edge of a circular system of ocean currents known as the South Pacific Gyre. Named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1998, the island is uninhabited. However, researchers say it has the highest density of plastic waste in the world. Some 38 million pieces of garbage have washed up on Henderson Island's once pristine sands. Analysis of the trash shows it was carried there from Asia, South America, Europe, the US, and Russia. Researchers estimate that 3,500 pieces of trash wash up on the island daily and typically include household items made of plastic. Nearly 30 years ago, UNESCO said Henderson Island's near pristine ecosystem was of immense value for science. But wildlife, including turtles and crabs, have been devastated by the garbage that has been dumped on the island's shores. Researchers say that trying to clean the island's beaches would be pointless because of the lack of visitors and sheer volume of trash that washes up there daily. They advise people to use alternatives to plastic, such as bamboo toothbrushes and canvas carrier bags, and to bring your own mug to Starbucks.